So all of us have some carbon in us because we got it from the plants, radioactive carbon. The plants are breathing it in all the time, and when the plant dies, it stops taking in any new carbon. It is assumed that the amount in the plant, then, is going to be the same ratio as the amount in the atmosphere. See, most of the carbon is carbon-12. A little tiny bit is carbon-14. Very small percentage is carbon-14. It is assumed that since the atmosphere is 0.0000765%, then they would say, well, then the plants must be 0.0000765%, and the animals must be the same. Well, I don't know if it's never been proven, but it's a reasonable theory, and I will give them that. It probably is true. When the plant or animal dies, he stops breathing and stops taking in new C14, so whatever they had begins to decay, and half of it will leave in 5,730 years. Then if you wait 5,730 more years, it'll be down to one-fourth, and then down to one-eighth, and then down to a sixteenth, and in theory it never goes to zero, but after five or six half-lives, you can't measure it. So even if nothing else was wrong, carbon dating would only work for about 30 to 40,000 years. So if somebody tells you, we know the Earth is billions of years old because of carbon dating, right away you can rest assured they don't have a clue what they're talking about. Even if it worked, it would only work for 30 or 40,000 years. It would not work for billions of years. After 30 or 40,000, it's so close to zero, you can't measure it. So they compare the amount of C14 in the atmosphere to C12, and they get a ratio. Then they compare the same things found in the fossil, that you're trying to carbon date, and they can estimate how long it's been dead. If the fossil has half as much carbon-14 as the atmosphere does, you'd say, oh, it's been dead for 5,730 years. Well, this all sounds good. This was invented in 1950, 47 to 53, by Willard Libby, University of Chicago. But there are some obvious assumptions that throw everything off, okay? Number one, has the amount of C-14 in the atmosphere always been the same? This is a serious problem for those who believe in carbon dating because Atmospheric carbon is increasing as long as the sun is putting it in. It's sort of like filling a barrel. If I told you, I said, brother, I want you to fill this barrel full of water, but I drilled holes in the side. As you're filling the barrel, it's leaking out. Sort of like your checkbook, okay? You keep putting it in and it keeps leaking out. How many know what I'm talking about with the checkbook analogy? Well, the sun is producing carbon-14 and it's leaking out through decay. If you're filling a barrel with water, at some point you're going to reach a stage called equilibrium. You will never fill the barrel past that point unless you increase the input or decrease the outgo. But if all other factors stay the same, the barrel is going to stay at that level. You will not get it to go any higher. It has been estimated that the earth would take about 30,000 years to reach equilibrium. What that means is if you took a brand new planet earth, stuck it out in the solar system, Sunlight would start producing carbon-14, and it would start decaying. In 30,000 years, it would equalize. Well, when they first invented carbon dating, they said, well, hey, we know the Earth is billions of years old. Mistake number one. Therefore, we can ignore the equilibrium problem. Hmm, mistake number two. It has now been discovered carbon-14 is still not in equilibrium. There is more today than there was 10 years ago, which proves the Earth is less than 30,000 years old. So carbon-14 is kind of a complicated proof that the Earth is not billions of years old. Here's a simplified version of how it works. If you tested an animal that was alive, if you took a sample of your body and tested it for carbon-14, it should give you about 16 clicks on your Geiger counter. Click, click, click per minute. That would mean it is zero years old. If you're only getting eight clicks per minute, you would say it is 5,730 years old. If you're only getting four clicks per minute, it's apparently been through two half-lives. It is now 11,460 years old. Two clicks per minute gives you 17,190 years old. This is a calibration curve. So if you dug up a fossil and you found out it's giving you three clicks per minute, you just get your graph and you line it up on three and measure down and say, oh, that's about, you know, 14,000 years old. This is how it's supposed to be done. Obviously, a freshman law student could take this apart in a few minutes in, in a court of law. But uh, if you walked into a room and found a candle burning on a table, and I asked you the question, when was it lit? You say, I don't know. It was burning when I got here. Okay, well, then let's uh, figure out the height of the candle. Let, let's, let's do some empirical science, okay? We're going to measure the height. We could do that very scientifically. Let's say the candle is seven inches tall. 
We all agree, we get in the you know, super fancy micrometers and we measure the candle. Everybody agrees, seven inches tall. Who can tell me when it was lit? Hmm. Well, let's do some more science. Let's measure how fast it's burning. We're going to watch the candle burn and measure it. We time it precisely with Olympic stopwatches. And we find out it is burning one inch per hour. Now who can tell me when it was lit? The candle is seven inches tall, exactly. It's burning one inch per hour, exactly. When was it lit? Anybody got a clue? Nope. Now you're going to have to make a few assumptions. Number one, how tall was the candle? And number two, has it always burned at the same rate? We don't know either of those. And the same thing with carbon dating. When you find a fossil in the dirt, you dig up the bones and you can tell the amount of C14. That can be measured extremely precisely. And you can measure how fast it's decaying at the present. Just like your burning candle, though, that's about all the evidence you're going to get. It. Now you have to make assumptions. How much C14 was in the atmosphere when that object was alive? In other words, how tall was the candle? And has it always burned at the same rate? We don't know either of those. If the Bible is correct and the earth had a canopy of water overhead, like we cover on video number two of our series, then there was probably very little C14 in the original atmosphere because it would protect it from UV light getting through. So they might have started off with uh, four clicks per minute when they're zero years old. If you wait 5,000 years and dig it up as a fossil, it's going to have two clicks per minute. And you're going to assume that it is 17,000 years old when it's only 4,000. I'll give you a few examples of carbon dating and how it doesn't work. And you can see for yourself. Living mollusk shells were carbon dated 2,300 years old. Uh, hello, they're still alive. They can't be 2,300 years old. A freshly killed seal carbon dated at 1,300 years old. They just killed it. Shells from living snails were carbon dated 27,000 years old. One atheist told me, yes, and we know now why we got the wrong date on that one. Okay. How do you know the other dates you've gotten are correct? You know this one's wrong and you know why it's wrong, but why can you claim other ones that you've gotten are correct? You can't claim that. One part of a mammoth was 29,000 years old, and other parts 44,000 years old. They found several mammoths and carbon dated them and got all kinds of wild numbers. Dima, the baby mammoth, one part was 40,000, another part is 26,000, and the wood next to it is only 9,000 years old. The lower leg of a mammoth found in Fairbanks Creek, Alaska, was 15,000 years old. The skin was 21,000 years old. Obviously, we have a problem here. Now, this was 1949 when carbon dating was first invented, back in 1947, 48, 49. And they were getting wild numbers back then, and they're still getting wild numbers today. It hasn't changed. Two mammoths were dated, and uh, one mammoth was 22,000 years old, another one 16,000 years old. And they're found side by side, dated 1992. Living penguins will carbon date about 8,000 years old. Material from layers where dinosaurs are found, carbon dated at 34,000 years old. Hmm, I thought dinosaurs lived 70 million years ago. A couple of Russian scientists carbon dated dinosaur bones at 30,000 years old. A guy from Ohio had some dated at 20,000 years old, only because he did not tell them they were dinosaur bones. If he would have brought in the dinosaur bone and said, I want you to carbon date this, they would say, oh no, this is a dinosaur bone, it's too old. What he did, he brought in a bone sample and said, would you please date this? I don't know what it is. They said, yeah, 20,000. Now see, that proves it's not a blind test. Carbon dating, the people who do it are very prejudiced based on the geologic column, which we'll get into in a minute. At Berkeley University, Carl Swisher used the most advanced techniques to date human fossils. Last spring, he was reevaluating Homo erectus skulls found in Java in the 1930s by testing sediment found with them. A hominid species assumed to be an ancestor of Homo sapien, Erectus was thought to have vanished 250,000 years ago. Even though he used two different dating methods, Swisher kept making the same startling find. The bones were 53,000 years at most, and possibly no more than 27,000 years, a stretch in time of time contemporaneous with modern humans. I'd like to point out the obvious. 